my name is actually Partha Nandy. This is my wife, Callie. Hello. Yeah, and so we are cooking with the Nandys, and we've got some really delicious, wonderful, beautiful, yummy recipes for you, and then we're going to create right here. Yep. The first one, what is it? Chicken curry? Chicken curry, yep. Partha's mama's chicken curry. Okay, her recipe. And then aloo gobi, what does that stand for? It's cauliflower and potato. So and aloo gobi is something we eat, it's a vegetarian dish, but we eat it at least twice a week. Our kids love it. And even my picky two and a half year old, even he will eat it, he eats nothing. And it's so really cute because he says aloo gobi. Aloo is potato, gobi is cauliflower, good stuff. And then you, the world's best favorite salad. salad, best salad. The best salad. salad. And what's that, the kale Morning, salad. Morning, noon, and night, yes. Yeah. It's kale, quinoa, and butternut squash. I'm telling you guys are gonna love it. Especially, it's a great hearty salad. It's great for the winter as well, so. And I think that, the, here's a wonderful thing about the salad is that we're using it as a side salad, but you can use it as a main salad. You can use it wherever you want. It's, it's really quite hearty. We're, Two or three things we want to talk to you about. Number one is that we want to make cooking fun. So we have our kids and our whole family cook with us. So we'd like to encourage you to do that same thing. Number two is that we want to make food that's delicious and nutritious. And third is easy. All this will be prepared within about 30 to 35 minutes. You guys ready to start? Yeah? yeah. Oh, Look at louder. all of these onions. Yes. You can use, we always so like to use sweet onions. We're starting with a chicken curry first because it takes a little bit of prep time with the, with the onions that we have to cook. So how many did you put in there, Kelly? I put two large, um, they were actually really large organic onions. Sometimes they can be a little smaller. So we just put a little bit of olive oil and we saute these organic onions. And the thing about the onions for this dish is it's really the basis for the sauce. So they really need to cook down and get nice and mushy and watery and translucent. And so they do take about 10 minutes. So, so we'll let that saute in just a little bit of so olive oil. So a little soft and kind of clear. Even if you can get it a little brown, that'd be great. Lots of Indian, Indian cuisine with the sauces have onion as a basis. So we're putting a little bit of salt just in. Just put a little salt because it helps break down the onion. Yeah. And then we're going to add the ginger and the, um, and the garlic. Perfect. So Partha's mom taught me this great trick about ginger. You can grate it right with the skin on it. And then, I love so the- So the onion, right? The onion seems like a nice, simple vegetable. The one thing we like to talk about is the health benefits of, of these type of vegetables. Onions are very good for inflammatory conditions, so it reduces inflammation and helps overall health. So a simple vegetable like that could really help you with your health. So remember that when you eat onions. Raw onions are even better than cooked onions if you can do it. But I love onions, and if you want to have, we use sweet onions, if you want a little bit more sweetness to your, to your uh, dish, you can add those sweet onions. Yeah, and I even really like more it. if you want the onion flavor. So we put the ginger in there. And now We're the garlic. Cook it. How long? So about, uh, you know, about maybe five or 10 minutes until it's translucent and cooked. So we're gonna yep. keep that going. And then as that's going, we're gonna start the aloo gobi. Aloo, which is the potato. We're gonna go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna peel the potato. Important, Cal, would you maybe tell them about peeling the potatoes, why that's important? Well, you always, I mean, we, again, we typically buy organic. Uh, we do our best, and Meyer has a, an amazing selection. And, you know, we really do shop at Meyer. There's all these gorgeous grocery stores down by where we live. We live right on the other, right by Troy, Michigan. And there's all these gorgeous grocery stores that have beautiful displays of all these pre-made, you know, the, the stores with the glass containers with all these beautiful pre-made uh, meals that are great for working families. But I, I noticed something. There was nothing in those grocery stores that had anything organic. So, you know, we really do shop Meyer, and, um, you know, it, it's not that much more expensive or... No, we, we, we don't want to... Some people say, you know what, Dr. Nani, you guys do organic and you can afford to it may be more expensive for us. You know, I, I don't know if I can afford it. So a great point that she made is that, so for example, we bought the cauliflower. When I buy cauliflower, it may be 50 cents more. I buy broccoli, it may be 50 to 75 cents more. And I and think sometimes that, that makes that's a worth difference, it. But that's worth it. So listen, you know what? You don't get the world's gigantic phone, right? And save the money on that and spend on your food. Right. We feel like food is medicine. So if you can, do your best in buying organic. So what are the rules? There's something called the Dirty Dozen. If you can look that up, it's called the Dirty Dozen that tells you which fruits, which vegetables, which foods would be nice to really buy organic. But the rule of thumb is that if you have thin skin, so grapes, for example, strawberries, stuff with not much uh, on the outer layer, try to buy organic. If you have thicker skin, for example, you have a watermelon. If you want to have to choose, choose that to not buy organic. We'd love to, for you to buy all organic, but if you can't, 
that's the rule of thumb there. You know, Partha has a nice graphic on our website at AskDrNandy.com or our social media, any Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. He's got a nice little graphic that you can take a look at. It talks about the Dirty Dozen Plus. There's a couple more they've added to the list since they labeled it the Dirty Dozen. Vegetables, that, fruits and vegetables that you should really strive to buy organic for sure. And we've washed this potato. Very important that even if you're peeling your potatoes, wash them because remember where they are, they're in dirt often. So you don't want to have the same kind of you know, stuff that's in the dirt in your food, so it's important. And we're just cutting this up in little cubes. What we're gonna do is, um, go ahead and you can put those yeah. onions in it. Sure, I'm gonna start this uh, little bit of olive oil. Or potatoes, rather. That's okay, a little bit of olive oil. And we're actually gonna cook these cumin seeds. And you'll be able to smell them. Oh, we've heated this a little. So it's a little it bit warm over here. I'm gonna cook these cumin seeds, and they'll, nice, they'll get a nice crackle. When you, when really you have the seeds, they look a little bit like fennel seeds. If you don't cook them, it'll taste like crap. Yeah, you basically. have to cook the. It will. You really have to word. cook. You really have to cook the spices well in Indian cooking. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna save this potato for our our uh, chicken over here. I live by the rule. Have you guys heard this before? Happy wife, happy life. That's exactly right. Is that true? I listen. To that. What about the statement for husbands? <laughs> Is there a happy husband, happy life? No. <laughs> Yeah, how come? Why is that? It doesn't rhyme. Wait a says. minute. But what about <laughs> us? Nobody gives a crap about the husband. Any husband in the audience? Just Here one? I am cleaning too. Who cl who cleans while they cook? Because she no does. one wants to. No one wants to clean after the case. So the cauliflower I'm cutting back to away from me and back to the cooking. So I'm <laughs> cut cutting about this this size piece, so it's nice and. It cooks well, and also it's nice, and uh, you can you can eat it at, at a bite. Yeah, we at a time. typically cook the potatoes a little sooner because we like the cauliflower to be a little more al dente. So you want to cook the potatoes al dente, here a little I bit. I like sooner. that word. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you guys a story about um, about uh, about Indian cooking. So when Parth and I were first married, we had the, we have these Indian channels. So we move we move in together. We get this Indian network, and we're watching like India Idol. I was giving her all and this Indian education. Dance India Dance, and so they're really cute shows. And the commercial comes on, and I'm completely offended by this commercial. It says uh, it starts out it's black and white. It's a white woman married to an Indian man. It's all black Just and like white. This. And the husband, she's in the kitchen all excited. The husband comes home from work. He's got his briefcase and his computer. And he looks at her and she turns around with a plate of pasta and he says, Pasta again? No, oh, it's terrible. And she, it's all black and white. So then it goes to full color and this whole ad about swad frozen meals and how wonderful the swad frozen meals are. The next scene, it's full color, red sari, red lipstick, the entire Indian family is there and they're all enjoying this beautiful Indian food. So one of the, the certainly there's nothing wrong with pasta. Obviously, all Not of us day, love right? pasta. Right? But what Indians have, the Indian cooking has really taught me is all these layers of flavor. This, this, this dish over here has nine different spices and the aloo gobi has seven. And all of them are easy to buy. There, you can get them at Meijer. The other thing is too, they use all the greens. Well, the I love thing, greens. You know about that story is that Indians really love their food. You know, we, we try to cook from scratch almost every single day if we can. So it's important that we, we cook food that we know what's going on. And we use every single part of the, of the, of the vegetable that we can. Adds a lot of fiber. And if you ask your doctor, more fiber is better, right? That's so, right. But they love the fiber. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some of the spices we're going to add here. So we're going to talk about first is that using turmeric. Turmeric is a beautiful yellow spice and it's been used for centuries. And what turmeric does is adds color to the, to the vegetable in your dish, but it also has been used for centuries to reduce inflammation, help with the immune system for a lot of different reasons. So I'm gonna put some of the, uh, the turmeric in there. And then we also have a nice graphic on, 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 on turmeric and the health effects That's of right. it. That's right, it's beautiful on too. Com. So it it helps with that. inflammation, it helps with um, memory. You probably yep. said yeah, that already, talk about I that, the immune system and memory, yeah. And the second thing we're gonna use is that cumin, C-U-M-I-N, cumin. And that is also something that helps with inflammation. Really adds a nice flavor to the food. So I'm gonna mix that in a little bit. And we have salt for tasting. So you can put a little bit more spice in there. It just depends on your taste. If you like it a little spicier, put a little bit more. We use what we think will work well for us. So put a little bit of salt. And then put a little bit of, I put a little bit of sugar to add a little sweet taste. Like my wife could do without the sugar, so she doesn't add it on, but 
we put a little bit of sugar in there. A little bit of sugar? Yep, and then a little bit of cayenne pepper. I would like this filled all the way, but she doesn't yeah, like it Yeah, we have a little much. bit of an argument in our family about the spice and the food, but yep. uh, so, since we have kids now, I usually win. So it's a little less spicy at so our house. Is, this is kind of a, a testament to our marriage. So I would like it <laughs> all the way up there. She'd like none. Oh, we made in the, the middle. middle. Right? That's right, that's, we do. That's, that's what and I've learned to, you know, to handle a little bit more spice. So, but for all of you today, we, we, we made it a little lighter, like we do typically when the kids eat it. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. And then I add a little bit of water to mix the spices. Yeah, it's show them really... real quick how the spices really stick to the... Um, Hope you guys, can you guys see that? Can you, can you see? see it? So we add a little bit of the water because we have to, we have to add a little bit of the water so that it can mix and you know, definitely coat the rest of the, the cauliflower and the potato. If the spices don't coat all the vegetable well in Indian cooking, it feels like you've just dumped spices on food. That's and right. And it tastes terrible. So you, you gotta really mix need it to cook together. It. Now I'm gonna then, turn it back up. Nice, even mixture. I wanna check on these, these onions and see how they're yep. doing. In the meantime over there, I added your potatoes, Partha. Perfect, thank you. So they're doing pretty well. There's, so if you can see this, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, it's not quite done translucent it should be so a little bit you can almost see it through if you don't if you don't do that then what will happen is that the flavor of the onion doesn't come through hey, can you guys smell anything yet yes it smell good. is it a good smell yeah I love it I remember every Sunday with the, I, I grew up in India right so I was I came here when I was about nine every Sunday we cook uh, uh, chicken and the smell in my in my house where I was I was eating it was unbelievable my mom actually used to grind the spices. So Isn't that amazing? Stuff, that is amazing. You see stuff ground up. I mean, she took those, those spices whole and she'd grind it up and then I'd help her. I find that. Kid, I'd help her. But the smell was unbelievable. And that's the whole idea is that even as a kid, I knew that we cooked as a family. We did things as a family. So my 11-year-old... I, I think that's lost on a lot of families now. People my, don't cook together and they don't... Do things together. They don't do things Our together. Our 11-year-old daughter, right? Two days ago... She's on that little device, right? You've seen those things. What are those called? Phones, right? <laughs> I said, Charlie, what are you doing? She said, nothing. Uh -huh. I said, no, you're doing something. So she's playing a game, right? I said, well, let's do something useful. She goes, oh, no. my God. Oh, oh, OMG. With you? So I said, you got to cut some vegetables. Uh -huh. So she started cutting onions, right? Then she started cutting potatoes. And guess what happened? She made the whole meal. And at the end, she was excited and yeah. she was proud she totally to do got it. Into it. And so what the idea is that if you incorporate your children to do this stuff, they won't be bored, they won't be complaining, and they will and eat the food. And you're teaching them a skill. You know, this is something Partha really taught me because for me, I don't know if anyone else in the room is like this, it is just easier to do it yourself. Or am I, I mean, like, I don't want to tell you to chop them the way I want them to be chopped or put the container, the right container that I want, or use the spoon that I want, or don't put your ladle on the countertop, which is a huge pet peeve. You know, so I had to get over a lot of those things and use a lot of words to kind of teach her how to cook. But it's, you know, she's a little young to learn how to cook to me, but 11 years old, I don't think, I, she's totally doing it, she's totally loving it, and she knows how to make Indian food. I mean, it's amazing to me. And the skills me. that you teach them though, they, you know, I'm, even though there are a couple of kids here, even though they complain, they are looking to you for guidance and they're looking to you to teach them. Even if they're taking their jacket off and saying, I don't want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. They, they still, really do. Once they get into it, they will enjoy themselves. So yeah. while we're cooking the chicken, yeah. while we're cooking the cauliflower, we're going to do the world's best salad here. You so still want some off, more time on this, huh? I think so. Just maybe a minute or two. And then, okay. and then we'll do it. See how we agree on everything? Yeah. I'll disagree. Yeah. We get along. We never disagree. It's we get perfect. along all the time. So well, what, whatever he wants, I want. What we're doing whatever with this, I want, he wants. They believe in you. <laughs> so this is kale, right? Yes. Kale is, is a beautiful, wonderful, uh, you know, vegetable that we see, and, and, and a leaf that that lots of people use for salads. What we're gonna do is warm it up, put a little bit of oil to change the texture of the kale. What it does is make the kale a little more heartier, and it tastes tastes a little different. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of olive oil here. Extra virgin. My, you know, Meyer Organic. Like, we can't say it enough how easy it is to go to a regular grocery store, the not a specialty mm. store, and really get what you need. So I'm putting the kale in here. And all Ooh, I'm doing, this is delicious. Yeah, it, looks, it looks and smells amazing. great. So all I'm doing with this is just basically not cooking it, just warming it up a little bit so that it changes the texture. 
but I'll tell you, it changes everything. Yeah, I've got when one more that. over here for you because it's going to whittle down to nothing. Yeah, let's put it over there. We got it. And then while we're cooking, though, I think we should probably add some, um, some stuff to chicken because I think it's almost ready. Let's do it. And I think for those of us who are, you know, who are out there saying, you know what, I don't cook very much, you know, even if you're a novice, just remember, multitask when you're doing it. So, you know, while we're letting that cook, you start back here. So what we're going to do is we've got the potatoes and the onions in here. Maybe uh -huh. tell them a little chick about the well, chicken, Well, what I use, this is what I use when I have my in-laws over. It's six, it's, oh, this is, looks like it's cracked. This, there are six. I'll help um, you there. There, typically when we have six people over, it's six, bra it's six uh, chicken Breast. thighs, sorry, chicken thighs, and three breasts, and I chop them up. I chop these a tiny bit smaller than I typically do so everyone can get a sample, but we put about, you know, bite-sized chunks. We buy the organic chicken, and the reason we put the thighs in is because it adds a little bit more juice. You know, there's a little bit more fat there, but I typically trim, you know, all the large pieces. Turmeric, you've seen that before, yep. right? Yep. And what that helps with is what, uh, Kristen or Kyle, what does it help with? And the immune system. Helps. This, you know what, in, in certain parts yeah, of India, right. when you get a wound, they put the turmeric right on the wound because it helps with infection. And then you got cumin. What does that help with, uh, you guys? Helps arthritic condition and inflammation, exactly. Garam masala, another Indian spice. Wonderful, a little cayenne pepper, less than what I would use. Let's, for the, for the record, show that I'm compromising. Cayenne pepper. I am a good husband. <laughs> right, Taffy? Good husband, he that's right. He just keeps telling himself that. He keeps telling him. And then, we mix, mix, mix. I'm a mixer. Who's a mixer in here? Yeah, he's a stirrer. Who likes to mix? I like to stir. She I'm like, like keep it covered. So it keeps the cover. It'll happen it. automatically. But I like to mix it because I want to coat all those beautiful spices with the chicken, right? Because you want that chicken to be, like, delicious. Wonderful. So, and what I like about the fact is that one of the point is that when you have non-vegetarian food and meats, try to buy organic as much as you can. With vegetables, and we talk about those rules, but with, when you have meats, when you have fish and chicken, try to buy organic as much as you can. And I'll tell you, when I went to Meyer, it's, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think that if you really budget yourself, you can do well. And, they, and it's, it's right on the regular counter. What about vegetarian eating, Partha? We get a lot of questions about that, and we're vegetarian, you know, two days a week. Absolutely. So here, I'll let you put that pressure cooker on, yeah, and sure then we'll will. talk about the pressure Go cooker ahead. as well. So Indian cooking is, you know, two days a week, what we do is we actually cook vegetarian. So Thursday and Saturday, we don't eat any meat at all. And so we just have vegetables. And in Western culture, vegetables are a side dish, right? We don't usually use them as a main dish. What we've learned is that to make heartier dishes, like that cauliflower and potatoes is a hearty dish, so you can use it as a main dish. Whereas, you know, if you use just a little bit of, of vegetables and use it as a side dish, it doesn't always fill you up, so we use that. The salad that we're making is a heartier dish. So the thing is to change your mindset so that vegetables can be a main dish. And we talk about this in, in, a, in, in a talk that we do, Be Your Own Health Hero. The more vegetables, the more plants that you have, the healthier your body Don't is. Don't you love that the, plant slant? Yeah, so more towards vegetables. The mm -hmm. longer you live, but not just the number of years, but meaningful lives. So it, it's really important that when you do that, that you, that you try to incorporate your life. I would say a rule of thumb, if you could eat meat twice a week, that would be perfect. You can do that, do your best, but twice a week would be perfect. So we'll go ahead and start with the salad. Okay. Here's this, oh my gosh, I love this stuff. Well, you know so. what, you should also tell them a little yeah. bit about pressure cookers too. Oh yes. You know, Partha's a science geek. He loves everything science, he loves everything math. You know, he's a real underachiever. He graduated high school just a month after he turned 16. So um, he's a real underachiever. But he's always telling me the science behind things. So every time I pull out the pressure cooker, I hear why the science behind the pressure cooker. So be sure to tell How him. How many of you used a pressure cooker before? Yeah, so a couple, Love not it. a lot, right? It's old Love school it. cooking sometimes. And here's what happens is that You've got this container. Maybe you can make the dressing while I'm talking to him. You know, yeah, here's sure a, can. Here's a pressure cooker, right? You've got a closed, closed container, and what happens is that you're raising the temperature. There's a rule of physics that if you keep the volume, which is constant, and you raise the temperature, the pressure goes up. And when pressure goes up, food cooks a lot easier. So this dish, if I didn't use a pressure cooker, it would take me 45 minutes to an hour, maybe even more. We can get this done in 10 minutes because the increased pressure created by the increased temperature in a closed environment makes it cook faster. And then 
The other thing is that you've got to be safe, right? So you can't just jack this thing open That's right. because it will explode in your face. Yeah, you have to be really you, careful. You'll be, you'll be injured. So you got to be careful. You have to release the pressure before opening it. So, but it's really wonderful. And those, those Sunday days I told you about when I was a kid, always use a pressure cooker. About twice the size of this one back in Bangalore, India, we used to feed by double the size that, uh, of our family that we have now. But it was so delicious. So now we're onto the salad. Onto the salad. So it's uh, a fourth cup of olive oil. And then we use this apple cider vinegar. I really like the one that um, I have here. It's got a little bit of pepper in it. It's called apple cider vinegar peppered. Um, and it really makes the salad. Mm -hmm. so if you make it, so. the apple cider vinegar really makes the you salad. You could use it with other vinegars. You could use red wine vinegar, but I just we prefer the, the flavor of this apple cider vinegar. Because it tastes delicious. It's amazing. So right? we're just going to add a little salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And then we're going to use these really cute little, really tiny cute little measuring spoons and put a little bit of maple syrup in here. Let's see this is optional, but I think it really makes the dish. So, you know, it calls for about half a teaspoon, but one teaspoon wouldn't hurt. I'll put a little bit of ginger in there for Nothing you. Nothing wrong with one teaspoon. We just have that. Yeah, sure. A little, little bit of ginger again. You can grate it right with the skin on it. And again, I store it right in the freezer in a plastic baggie. It's so nice, it's always there. You can also do that with wine. You can ever store red wine in your refrigerator in a Tupperware? You can store it there in your freezer, excuse me. I just store it there, and then when I'm getting ready to make my minestrone or whatever, I just pull it out of the freezer and I store it in one cup, you know, containers. The word baggy always kind of sounds funny, doesn't it? A little <laughs> baggy in there, uh-huh. A little bit of garlic here. Takes me here. back to my Bronx days. A little bit of garlic, and that's your dressing, so it's yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, I put a little garlic in there as well. I'm gonna take that. So that the is the out. dressing. I put a big chunk of uh, ginger. Ginger, the I out. took out. Okay. Perfect. How's our? It looks like that yeah. burner. Is that burner working? Is that working? Here's some tongs, honey. My dear. Let's see. It doesn't work at all. Oh. Excellent. Well, the other one really works. So if you want to swap so them out for a second. So in between, we'll do that. Yep. I'll toss this quickly. Perfect. Butternut so squash. Okay. Isn't that I Look at that color. Love butternut squash. It is amazing. And I. I didn't really eat, I ate acorn squash prior to being married to Partha. I, I never, um, I had never really had butternut squash. Do you guys ever eat it? It is amazing. So he told her, me about it for like two years and just like maybe a year ago, I finally was like, okay, you've been holding out on the butternut squash. I it's taught totally her butternut amazing. squash, she taught me olives. Yeah, he never, never really ate olives. olives. And then she taught me how to use it. So again, you know, this is marriage, right? You learn to compromise. Stuff you never thought was good, you learn to like. And so that's, that's right. really important for young people who are sitting there in the audience. That is the key, compromise with a capital C. Because, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Butternut, that's squash, right. olives. Some people that's have right. fights over that, right? That's it's craziness. right. craziness. So I'm, I'm so, sitting there trying to warm this thing up here. What about quinoa, Partha? Let's talk. Who eats quinoa here? I love quinoa. Uh, love quinoa. Yeah. It is an amazing substitute for rice pasta, any grain that you, uh, potato, it is amazing and the health benefits are vast. You know, it, it's amazing that, did you know that the amount of protein that's in this quinoa is enough for one man's protein needs in a day? I mean, Nobody ever figured that out. And that's one of the things when I talk about, you know, be your own health hero, be your own health advocate and do a plant slam, they say, well, doctor, it's all great, but I've got to have my protein. <laughs> I'm a bodybuilder, I lift 500 pounds a day, right. I run 50 miles, I have to have my protein. So I tell them, listen, you know how much protein broccoli has? They don't know. You know, they know how much protein quinoa has. So vegetables can give you protein as well. So imagine that and remember that, that you will not have to compromise on the, on the protein by, by having vegetable dishes. So this is almost done here, almost heated up and we're ready for the salad. Yeah, if that doesn't shrink down more, I can't fit it into this plate. So we just gotta wait yeah, for that to wait cook a little bit. Minutes. But we can add the peas here to the aloo gobi. What about kale though? We haven't talked about kale. How Go ahead, please. It is. Cover that so, for a second. Maybe yeah, it'll. Who, there you who go. likes kale here? Anybody eats kale? It is one of the world's best superfoods. You guys don't eat kale? Unbelievable they do, they do. kale is. I am in love with kale. And I, it was scary to me because I thought it would taste like crap. I, yeah, like crap. And it's fantastic. And I, I make the greens, I just make it like normal greens, like any spinach or any other green now. And it is so good for you. And the kids are starting to like it. And so if you had to pick one superfood, one super food, you would, I, I would pick kale because of all of its nutritional values, forget the multivitamins and everything else, but the antioxidants, it can really protect you. So kale is, is really wonderful. So 
So we use that and it's, it's getting heated up. I think it's good. You want to try it that way? Let me stir it up just a little bit more because I don't know if it'll fit in the pan if we don't heat okay, this cool. up enough. As my son says, num num. Yeah, he loves alu gobi. So we add, you know, peas, we add frozen peas to, and the other thing we do too is we put eggplant in this dish, this alu gobi. So you, you can just chop up the eggplant when you put the potatoes in and let them get nice. I chop them a little smaller so they can get nice and mushy. Fantastic addition to that dish and it makes it even heartier. And we use peas just to garnish the dish a little bit. It, it colors it right up. And my son We always add them at the end so it stays, they stay nice and green and they stay crunchy. And we just buy organic frozen peas and throw them in at the end. And again, you know, kudos to, to Meyer for, for helping us do this dish. But also, even before that, we, we, we shopped at Meyer. You can get all these, these items pretty easily. You don't have to go to a specialty store. So I'm going to mix that right in. Yep. What do you and think? Gonna, is it ready yet? Yeah, I'm going to take this off now. too. There we go. I'm gonna put a little bit more water into this, Cal. What do you think? You know, a little bit of water. A little more water? Yeah. Let me see if we have in the fridge. Yeah, just a slight bit because it's, it's okay dry, but it's better when it's a little wet. Here you go, honey. Thank you. So this recipe okay. called for one cup. Maybe it needs a little more. Yeah. Maybe just this head of cauliflower was a little bigger. Could have been. Okay, wait till you guys try this salad. So I'm making it this year for Thanksgiving. So it's perfect. So we got this alu gobi pretty much done. We cooked it on medium heat for those of you who are wondering. Medium heat the whole way. Then what I'm going to do is put it on low heat as we're waiting. Oh my gosh, it smells, this place smells good. Do you delicious. guys still smell anything I'm going to add the rest of the dressing. Yeah. I don't usually I, use well, the whole thing. Anybody over here, can what? you smell it? All right. Who wants to try some food? Anybody want to try any of this food? Yes, yes. All right. First All right. of all, any questions about any of the dishes we said? Talked about anybody? Any doctor questions? Any doctor questions about the dish? About the dish? Go ahead. Food question? Yes. yes. Food question. What kind of doctor are you? You oh. know, I'm, I'm actually. It's a great question. <laughs> I'm a gastroenterologist, which is a, a GI doctor. So I deal with the stomach, the intestine, the liver, the pancreas, the colon, the whole thing. And I'm also an intro medicine doctor. So Here you go. food you is can, especially you important can serve for that me because you know what we put in our body directly correlates with you know, how people Woo. feel. So we have diseases like Crohn's disease. Irritable bowel syndrome, and people say, you know, how is diet involved? It's very important because you put crap in, you get crap out. That's right. Right? Sometimes you don't get enough crap out. You put the wrong <laughs> Maybe there's food not in, enough crap. Right? Yeah, so, that's right. And we know it can happen. We know that the intestinal tract is full of immune cells and nerve cells. So people don't realize that you can get autoimmune. So stuff your own body attacking yourself through, through disorders of the GI tract. So you put the right food in, the right bacteria in. It really yields benefits for your entire body. So that's important. So oh my gosh, that's, that's amazing. So this is pretty pretty done. This is how we eat it like two it, days yeah. a week at least. This is good for you? Perfect. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, secret. Oh, that a is such a good question. Can it's, I answer this one because? Yeah, it's just, it's just hard, but go ahead. Well, the only reason I'd say I answer is that sometimes I have to prep the food so the chef can get home. and. I have done two different ways. I, I bake it, obviously, and then it, you can scoop it out. But I have used a potato peeler. Have you ever used a potato? I use a potato peeler. That's and what we do. And it's worked out. What do you do? No good. Yeah. I know. It is not easy, though. I mean, it's, not, it's just how it is, right? It's got a thick coat. But I find a, a knife good, is not a good solution. If you have a good potato Unless, peeler, though, a good one that's kind of, you know, it's hardy, that, that works well. But once you get to it, look at that. Look at the, the results. It's beautiful. Any other questions? Burning questions? When I make it at home, I'll put like just a little ha a slice with the peel on, on a plate. And then people can just put a little butter, salt and pepper and spoon it right out. That's we've the way we've done that, yep. Any questions? Yes, sir, in the back. Yeah, it's a good question. He said that you know, talk about organic vegetables. What about with meat? I think it's especially important with meat. If you can, all dairy, all meat, all chicken. If you can, if you can pick organic foods, it really go. would be important. For obviously fish. Oh, you need a spoon. You know, if you can have, if you can have wild caught, if much, as much you as possible, it would be important. Yeah. But you know, okay. the thing is that vegetables, like we talked about the rule of thumb with the thin, thin skin versus thick skin, with, with meats and dairy, absolutely try to go organic. Here you know, you go. again, we don't want to make you feel bad, but if you can afford it, 
do it. And go to, go to regular stores. You don't have to go to specialty stores where you can afford it in regular stores. And often they're on sale. Often they're on sale. I buy you know, chicken, I buy chicken, and I buy uh, all my dairy that's organic. And you can get it in a regular store just like Meyer. And Meyer has all those products. If you just go down, uh, I don't know exactly in my, uh, Saginaw where it is, but where is it in Saginaw, the Meyer? Right down the street? Yeah, if you go down there, they have a good selection of, of, of food. Yeah, go ahead. Correct. It's important, you know, and, and what you said, sir, was that you can buy store brand organics, you're absolutely true, instead of buying a, a national brand, it really saves a lot of money. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, yeah we talked about that a little bit. You know, the, the, the benefits of, of spicy, spicy food and the spice we use, turmeric, ancient, ancient remedy for, like I said, immune system, inflammation, arthritis, heart disease, it goes on and on. And so lots, lots of benefits, not only just for the taste of it, but the health benefits. Oh, good. Even, I'm going to pressure, cayenne pressure pepper this. And I some just of those, didn't want you guys to. Used forever for those inflammatory conditions. So absolutely, even though it tastes a little spicier and you may not be able to, if you can adjust to it, there are a lot of health benefits. It's hot. Even some, some people even have shown that you can actually ward off things like Alzheimer's. In countries where they use these spices more, you, you tend to see less evidence of Alzheimer's and diseases of, of mental conditions. So great question. Any more questions? I have one. Yes, she please. She has one. Well, Michelle with, has one. With Thanksgiving coming up, what is when it comes to stuffing? She said, is it bad to put the stuffing in the turkey? Listen, here's the other point yes, about, I'm about, glad you brought about that up. food. Is that you, it, it's there to be enjoyed, right, Michelle? Yes. So you're going to do it once a year, maybe a couple times, go for it. The joy of food sometimes is more important than what the food consists of. And I'll say it again, as long as you don't do it every day, right? So yesterday we went to a uh, Japanese restaurant and there was, it was not the healthiest food, but we hardly ever go there. Mm -hmm. Did we feel guilty to beat ourselves up about it? No, because we felt the joy of the food sometimes is more important than saying, I didn't go organic for one day. That's right. right? So and you know, sometimes you just need times. chocolate. Sometimes you just need some french fries. And if that helps your mood, you know, short term, and that's okay. That's okay. And there's a joy of eating that's really important. And I, I, I want, want to emphasize that. What we like to do is see if we can, if we can combine that joy with healthy foods that are organic as well. And I think we've, we've achieved some of that. So great question. Yes, in the back. Yes, ma'am. Oh, good. Is that the salad? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, so she, she said, she asked me a question about GMO, three little letters. Mm -hmm. And that stands for genetically modified organisms. What that means in English is that you take a seed, a, a seed that produces corn, Let me give and then you slice it or you combine it with a virus so that it can multiply quicker. And so it can actually grow in places that it can't grow normally. So it can produce more bountiful crop, which is great. But the problem with GMOs is that they've seen that it can actually be harmful. And so, so certain tumors can be found in, 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 in experiments and in research. The problem is that it's very controversial because people don't know if, it's, if the proof is actually so great that you can say yes or no. But from, from my standpoint, from my family, if there are negative effects that are possible, then I think it's important to avoid it. So until that research comes out, I've got a, I've got a one year old, I've got a two and a half year old, I've got an 11 year old, I want to protect them. So if I can do that with using non-GMO products, I do. And the cool thing is that when you have this label, if you can see this, it says USD organic, this is my organic olive oil, it says USD organic. When you have that, then you know that it's non-GMO as well. 95% of those, of those uh, components are non are organic so that they're non-GMO. So if you see organic, USDA certified organic, you know they're non-GMO. So that's one quick way of trying to get non-GMO foods. But great question. Any more questions? I have a question. Yes. You talk about inflammation all the time, how these um, foods prevent inflammation. Why is that so important? What is inflammation? That's a great Maybe question. Maybe repeat the question. Yeah, Just so she me. asked, you keep talking to us about inflammation, Dr. Danny. What does it all mean? What is, it, what is the skinny on inflammation? So the, here's the deal, is that every disease in the body, not, including heart disease, no, deals down. with inflammation. Disease of your mind, inflammation. So arthritis, inflammation. So even though things we thought were just blockages before are actually now inflammatory conditions. So if you can reduce that inflammation, you stop that process from going on. So you can take things like lupus, things like inflammatory bowel disease, even heart disease, 
and, and decrease things like stroke and heart attacks. So that's why it's so important. All disease are coming down to inflammatory conditions. So really important question. And, and listen, you can have delicious food that reduces that inflammation. So I think it's a win-win. Great yeah, question. a lot of times we'll just saute vegetables and we'll just add a little turmeric to it. So when we saute like just a little bit of broccoli, our kids love a little sauteed broccoli, we just add a little teaspoon of turmeric to it. Turmeric really doesn't change the flavor of the food. Not very much at all, it just mm -hmm. changes the color. Yeah, it does yeah. change the color and it'll make your nail beds nice and yellow, but uh, it comes out of clothes. It definitely doesn't stain your clothes. And so it, you know, good. the thing is that like, I, like, like she asked, you could have many benefits of turmeric beyond the inflammation. There have been studies showing you know, Alzheimer's, I was in Australia there, just about two weeks pressure. ago. I was speaking in Australia, in Sydney. And in Australia, number four cause of death for females is Alzheimer's and the dementia. And this spice has been shown in lots of reports to decrease that. So if we could incorporate that in, in amounts in your food, and you do that without changing the flavor. That's it's right. Just, it's fantastic. And you know, they make turmeric pills now, but I just kind of feel like put a teaspoon on your broccoli. Exactly. It doesn't even change the flavor. I will suggest, though, make sure it's sauteed and cooked in there because it will taste like powdery if it you gets don't. Gummy, yeah. But just a little bit it goes a long way. And if you make it part of your daily routine, you don't need to buy a pill. And the important thing is that food is medicine. I'll say it again. Food is medicine. So we you know. We would never take a pill without knowing what it's for, but we put all kinds of crap in your mouth, right? So we have to realize that what we eat can be medicinal. What we eat can be cathartic. So you can have vegetables, fruits, and meats that actually clean your system, right? They actually are antioxidants. They act as scavengers. So what they do is they go into your bloodstream and through your liver and find all the toxic substances and grab them. And so we have things like cauliflower, a simple vegetable like cauliflower will go in your body and actually grab it. They've done studies to see prostate cancer and see how if we can reduce that with just cauliflower and potatoes. It's, and simple foods that we have all around us we can use for medicinal purposes. That's exactly right. Any other questions? Ye I, yes. I have a bad question. Can I answer this one real quick? Sorry, one more. Yes, sir. You look like a chef. I am a chef. Yeah. You are a chef. All chef right. Priority. Let's, what's your question over here? When you were talking about organic foods. Yes, sir. I have found with my Dealings, but you have to watch for what is your name, sir? My name is Dennis Sturz. So Dennis asked an important question. He said, how do you know what's in your food? And so just because it says organic doesn't mean it's organic. That's right. Very important. First of all, know your labels very well. So the one thing I, what, one thing I look for is this USD organic. Sometimes it'll say made with organic ingredients, and that's not enough. So it has to say USD is certified organic. And if that says that, 95% of the ingredients are organic. 5% still may not be. So you, but you know, for most of us, you know, that's better than what we're doing right now. That's right. And then you're absolutely right. When it says fat free, it probably means sugar full. So what they do <laughs> is that they take the fat out, they stick the sugar in so it can taste better. And so that's what you have to watch out for. And, the, and some of the new U, USD guidelines for labeling have changed that. They put down what's added sugar. But you're absolutely right. What I will tell you is in the yes. beginning, the time goes up to about 40 minutes. But as you get used to oh, what you're doing, on the other you go side right to it and you know what to look for. You're absolutely right. There is a learning so curve though. But great question. Thank you. One thing I'd like to say about the shopping organic, when we switched over to living organic a year or two ago, you know, the shopping was tough in the beginning. But now we know everywhere to go. We know what to buy and it does, you do have to read your labels, but you know, we tend to really not buy that many things in a box. You can buy organic quinoa. Usually the sec once you get to know your grocery store and know the section, it's really not that difficult. And we really don't buy that many things in a can. We buy a t uh, an occasional you know, can of tomatoes. And I'm not gonna say that we don't buy some things you know, at Thanksgiving time or holidays. But day-to-day -day living, we really don't buy very many things in a can at all or yeah, jar. We, we, uh, we have the philosophy we want whole foods that we know what's going in our body. That's so exactly right. if you know what you're cooking, then you know what's going in your body, so you have, no, you have no surprises. Now, if you want to put junk in your body and you know it, that's a choice you're making. That's why we try to buy vegetables, fruits, and even meats and try to make them from scratch as much as we can. Any other hey, questions? At all? I'm going to release this pressure. So we got so chicken be a little bit there, loud here. Where we're trying to get the, the chicken cooked this, at a proper time. Well, you have to be careful with these pressure cookers. This is all sorts of pressure. So important, and don't he, just open this because if you do, then what happens is yeah, it can explode, could in your explode face. right in your face. So that's why the chicken is really only cooked in about 10 minutes at really high heat, 
high pressure. I mean, it, this thing is boiling in here. So it's fantastic for families because it's really quick. The other thing is too, is even though there's a lot of ingredients in these things, you can buy pretty big uh, quantities them, of them at a time. And you know, it doesn't take that long. You just take a teaspoon here, teaspoon there. You know, it doesn't, even though all the ingredients are whole, nothing's in a package that you just open up and throw in the, in the pot. It really doesn't take us very long to do know. these. Okay, so you know the chicken's done. The potatoes are totally done. They hardly cooked prior to us putting it in the pressure. So this dish, here? how does it smell? And we're gonna garnish with a little bit of cilantro here. Take or leave the garnish, of course. Put a little bit here. Tell me when. I'll yeah, for sure. There you go. Oh, right in one right spot. In the That's exactly right. He knows how to make it look pretty. Well, I'm using. There we go. Give me some. There you go. There we go. What you gonna All right. do? What do you Big guys think? Applause you like for the chicken. Where's Yay! the applause? I like it. <laughs> you guys want to taste that or no? Yeah. Yes. I don't hear you. <laughs> let me let you I taste it. I still can't hear you. <laughs> Here, you want to taste that? Yeah. All right. Num num. Can is I have it, some more? Is it like Mama used to make? You taste I'll it. take a bite. Mm. And, and you can take the other mm. bite. Mm. Ooh. Okay, not too much spice. You guys are gonna do just fine. Right. Hey, did you guys think the alu gobi was spicy? Did you think it was a little spicy? But you like it though? So this is interesting. Yeah. In the alu gobi, there is a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper. of cayenne pepper in that entire dish. And it has a nice little kick to it, I think. You can taste yeah, it. Yeah, enough to wake you up. <laughs> right? Did you wake up with Let that? Let me get you another spoon. Yeah. So we're gonna have the You're chicken. Good? Any other questions? Are you guys good? Any questions? The way in the back? Yes, yes, sir. I'm wondering about the difference between iodized salt and sea salt. Does it matter? Oh, you know, the, here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, this comes up all the time, salt, right? Everybody's all about it's, sea salt. It's all about your preference. You know, I don't think there's a nutritional component that's different. Iodine is a necessary, uh, you know, nutrient for you. But there's no problems in using the iodized salt that you normally see. No problems at all. One of the things is, too, you know, if you guys don't know, Partha does, you know, we have a television show. Um, the television show does air internationally. We air throughout the United States in Parth and then also in Kuwait and Qatar. We just got picked up on all of India and all of Africa. So, but the reason I bring that up is because Parth is speaking all over the world. He just got back from Australia last week and he's going to Mumbai in January. And the lecture that he's giving is all about how to be your own health hero, how to advocate for your life, and how to be a better human being, and how to be happier in your life. And one of those things is to be passionate about what you're doing, right. and to laugh a lot, and to strive for your strive for you know your passion, and get up out of the out of the bed every day. Now we're not saying that there aren't those days that you're like, I'm sad, I'm bombed. You know, I feel like just being in my pajamas and you know eating French fries. And I, do, you know, you can do that. And the next day, you got to pick yourself up and be like, okay, this life is not going to come find me. You got to go get it. And so, one of the things that Partha has really taught me is tireless, passionate work. And you know what? Work can be a huge part of your life. And it could be, it could be cooking. It could be an art class. It could be Pinterest. It could be, you know, fashion. It can be whatever business or whatever passion that you have. You just have to do it and do it tirelessly and it becomes part of everything. You're, it becomes part of your soul. And then it doesn't seem like work. It's, and that's what we do. It just is fun. We're just be, having a and great be an time. an advocate for your health. We have lots, Partha posts, we post recipes on AskDrNandy.com as well as our Facebook and Pinterest and all of those. So take a look. We're actually coming out, Partha's writing a book, a recipe book right now. Yep. So, and it's going to talk about obviously the recipe, but the health benefit of those recipes. And I would look for that uh, book probably first of the year. And how you could be, exactly, be an advocate for your health by eating delicious food. So, Thank perfect. you so much for coming. Thank you so much. We appreciate High it. Five. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice We're job. Done.